Hello and welcome to the first lecture for this class. In this lecture we're going to look at how the class is going to run, how you'll be working every week and how the assessment's going to work for the class. So the class is called Machines, Languages and Computation. It's a 20 credit class so it's one sixth of your curriculum for this year if you're doing 120 credits and it runs over both semesters so it runs both up until Christmas and then after Christmas up to Easter and there's two lecturers myself in semester one and my colleague Jules Hedges in semester two. The way that we're going to assess the class is using four class tests and I'll tell you about those in a minute and there's two of those in each semester for you. There's no exam in the exam period for this class in either semester one or in semester two but as you'll see in a minute the class tests are in fact mini exams. So what we're going to do every week is we'll have a Zoom session Monday 10 o'clock and a Zoom session Friday 10 o'clock and I'm going to call these start the week and stop the week. We'll also have a tutorial for you every week Thursday at 10 o'clock and Thursday at 1 o'clock and you just go to one of these sessions. I'll be allocating you to which session you're going to go to for this week. The class in semester one runs over the entire semester weeks 1 to 11 all the class materials will appear on my place and my email is john.levine at strathac.uk so if you've got any questions about the class or any problems you can send them there. As well as the lectures and the Zoom sessions we'll be doing some weekly exercises. Now this is for you to get some practice in doing the kind of things that you need to do as a computer scientist. They're pen and paper exercises because this is not a programming class, it's what we call a theory class. So the pen and paper exercises are mostly about writing algorithms, doing mathematical proofs and so on. This exercise will take you about one to three hours and it can be done wherever you like because it's a pen and paper exercise. So you can do it on your train if you're going by train, you can do it in your bed if you want to, you can do it between other lectures whenever you like. Every week we will go over the weekly exercise in the tutorial session. So it's important that you look at the weekly exercise and attempt it as best you can before the tutorial session. You don't hand in your answer to the weekly exercise, you go through it with your tutor in the tutorial session. Why should you do the weekly exercises then, you ask, if they don't count for anything? Well, doing these weekly exercises is going to put you in very good shape for doing the class tests and they're what we use to actually assess the content of the class. So these class tests that I've been talking about, well what they are is that they're mini exams. Usually they're taken in the lecture slot, but since everything is online in this semester, we're going to get you to do them as take home exams. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. So as I said, there's four class tests for CS103. There's two this semester and there'll be two next semester as well. The semester one tests, well they're on Friday the 30th of October, that's the Friday of week six in fact, and Friday the 4th of December, which is in fact the Friday of week 11. You'll get your results after three weeks after the test date and for the second test I'm going to do my very best to make sure that you get your results and feedback by Friday the 18th of December, which is the very last day of this semester. How are you going to do this? As I said, it's going to be a, in the form of a take home exam. We've been doing this for a little while now and it seems to work quite well as a replacement to sit down exams. 
what happens is that the exam te class test exam paper it appears on my place at nine o'clock in the morning on the day of the exam. So you go to my place anytime after nine o'clock and you'll download the test paper, which will be in PDF format. You then need to create a solution document. In other words, your answers to the questions that are on the test. For this, you can use a word processor if you like, or your answers can be handwritten if you've got good handwriting and it can be read by me. And then you'll have to digitize them. And the best way of doing that is using a scanner. You can upload then your solution document to my place and we're going to allow you to do that up to nine o'clock in the morning the following day. So you've in fact got 24 hours to complete the test. When we do these in the lecture slot, the students only get one hour to complete the test, but we're giving you a little bit of extra time here to allow for the fact that you'll have to schedule a quiet hour to do the test and also that you'll have to prepare and then upload your solution document. Now, this is a lot of quite um, interesting stuff for you to do, some technology to get to grips with, uploading um, your solution document to my place will be new to you. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have a practice run at doing all this in week four. I'll give you a essentially a, a short uh, question that you need to answer and you're going to upload your answer to that question on the Friday of week four and it will run in exactly the same way that the class test will run but two weeks earlier. And then I can test to make sure that you can upload your stuff. There is a book. It's not a book that you have to buy, but certainly you'll find this book on many computer scientists uh, bookshelves. The book is called Gerd Lesher Bark, An Eternal Golden Braid. And it's by a guy called Douglas Arf Hofstader and he won the Pulitzer Prize for this book. Um, you can buy it from Amazon for fourteen seventy nine. Obviously other booksellers are available. You can also find quite a few second-hand copies for less. Now parts of the class, particularly the MIU puzzle that I'll be introducing you to, are based on parts of this book, but you don't have to buy a copy. You can buy a copy if you like, and I would certainly recommend it as a, as a book to anyone. It's a bit crazy, but it's crazy in a really good way. And I think it was written in the early 1970s. Why do I recommend this book? Well, it's a really nice introductory book to lots of ideas that you're going to encounter over and over again in computer science. So the examples of this are, well, proof, especially formal systems. Formal systems are systems made up of symbols. And this really matters in computer science because symbols really matter to us. Decidability is whether or not something is, you're given an input and you have to decide yes or no. Is it one of these or not? An example, I give you a number, a whole number, and you have to decide whether or not it's prime. You say yes or no, that's a decidable problem. What other problems are decidable? Syntax and semantics, you're going to encounter a lot in computer science. And this topic, recursion, is where you define something in terms of itself. And it's really powerful in computer science. It's one of the top five ideas in computer science as voted for by members of the Association for Computing Machinery. Formal languages are the things that we program our computers in. So we better be very good at knowing what they are. Abstract machines allow us to reason about computation Artificial intelligence, well, that's a hot topic. That's making machines that can do tasks which, when done by human beings, require some brain power. 
and there's a lot more besides in the book. The central topic of the book, well, you could say that it's Gödel's fundamental result on the incomplete nature of formal systems. And in the book, um, Hofstadter compares that to the human mind and thinks about how that impacts upon artificial intelligence. There's also some lovely pictures by a guy called Escher, who you may have encountered already. And there's stuff about Bach as well, who wrote some very interesting music involving repetition and repeating structures. So in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the question, what exactly is computation? And after that, there'll be an article for you to read and a little quiz for you to complete before our first tutorial, and that will be on Thursday, the 24th of September.